before start. But uh, I think your tea is around and he has some pointers for you. Let me see if, if he's logged on, then he can update you on some. Alternatively, he would engage uh, Mauli later to receive some of the prompts that Prof, Prof has asked that you take note of for the sessions he took you and what he could ask you. And all that I've seen, one or two of them, there's a question on, uh, are you queer are you uh, text? The beautiful ones are, are not yet born. He, he would want you to look at the chapter six of that literature. I'm sure when you play the recording, you'll be able to extract all those and then keep yourself abreast with time. Let's just quickly take questions that you may have so far on content done. You've done development, what it is, uh, conceptualizing it from African perspective, the problems associated with it. I've seen your group presentations. If you did the work together, then I think it is a very, very good, you know, very, very good um, submission. Perhaps that, that, that works for you guys, because I, I read, I read, uh, the paper some are, <coughs> excuse me, some are very rich. I've seen Harrison and Ankuma. I think Ankuma's own, he and the colleague, their own came in very early, Philip. So I, I, I had seen it earlier. Perhaps I even commented on it on your platform. I saw Harrison and others as well. There, there were one or two groups that had some, a mark also de uh, deducted because of the typos. Not just the typos, I didn't do it and they didn't went you know, one or two of them. But generally, I don't think there was any group that went below eight marks. So that is good. I looked at the submissions themselves and I think it was impressive. You should have that posturing when you are in class as well, okay? So that it will show. You should ask those questions. You should think around the box like you did. I saw people making cases of, you know, a brain drain, a new colon like the reasons for the supposed, quote unquote, the supposed retardation of Africa's development, you know, and and I think those are very good points. You should look out for them. I don't know how I would engage them later on, but you should look out for them in your subsequent uh, feedback in, in the course. The course is contemporary issues in philosophy. So there are issues that are, you know, contemporary to us, issues of development, there's the issues of migration, the God factor, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the human person as an animal and how you, you, you think of other animals in the context of the human being for Africa. You know, we'll, we'll discuss all those uh, subsequently. Right, now, unless there's a question on the development bit, we can move on. Let's know if you have any questions. Is there any question on the concept of development, uh, Africa, Africa's development, new colonialism? As uh, anybody? Okay, then we can go on quickly to discuss the what I've projected on the screen, which is the need for conceptual decolonization in African philosophy. You have you have played the recordings from Prof. You have engaged the content. What do you have to say to that content? What do you think the content sought to do? Please don't drag the discussion. Um, I just want to help you make sure that you have everything covered. So you would have engaged that content already. You would have even listened in to the lecture. You have an upper hand. So let's hear from you. What you saw in the text. Anybody, quickly, 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 please. Do you want to do another group work on that? Or individual work? That'd be too much on you. You have other courses that you are doing. So let's hear you. What, what did you see in the conceptual decolonization text? That's really this paper. Adams.
if you didn't see anything in the text, at least you, you, you listened in to the lecture. What, what is the paper about? Set us off, then I can pick it up from there and then mop up nicely for you. Adams? Adams, are you there? Is Adams Hello, there? Doc. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Doc, please, the yeah. question. My network was uh, yesterday. Oh, my brother, stop the network. And I said the paper, uh, conceptual decolonization, which I have projected on the screen, mm, which you were to prepare, you know, uh, prepare for lecture on last week, mm, which a lecture has been delivered for main campus and shared with you. We heard the prof's recording. I, I sought his permission and asked that the, the, the session be recorded so that you bear you you the city campuses hear him directly even before we engage because he might set questions on his content that he delivered and he will not do a city campus in person or online you know that so you have heard him I'm just trying to solicit your your feedback on the content what did you see in the slides uh, in the PDF even if you didn't hear his lecture. Adams, I'm waiting now. I'm not moving. Hello. If I will move, I would have moved already. Did you read the paper? Hey, people are going to do this today too. Hmm? Adams. Oh. What did Please you see in me. the paper? I can hear you, sir. I can hear you. The network hasn't done anything. What did you see in the paper, sir? Well, according to me, uh -huh. he used, he, he was talking about decolonization. Decolonization is like, um, by which I uh, use it. Hello. I'm listening, Adams. Go ahead. We can hear you. There's no network issue anywhere, sir. Okay, go ahead and tell us what you saw in the text. Uh, he was talking about like decolonization. And for him, there are three superimposes that are used to like uh, that we, we have been colonized still. So we see ourselves that we are not so he uses the language, the religion and politics to explain those things. So for like the language like this, uh, he was saying like, we have made it official in our African country. For instance, when we come to here, uh, English is our official language. Why is it the language in the country? And also, if you go to countries like Burkina and so they have, French have been their official language, while they have their local language. So he was trying to say, like, because we have made uh, the basis came to colonize us and we are speaking the English and we have made it official, we are still under colonization. That's why he was he's trying to tell us that in order to uh, to decolonize, we have to develop a place for our own language. So it will be very difficult for us to um, be at one point at the beginning, but when we're able to do it and we get together to get a one language, we'll be able to do our own things and get to our, in terms of development. And also, again, we also talk about religious having that. The African African religion is the African traditional religion, and the Western one is Christianity and Islam. And for instance, the Christianity like this, they have been preaching about when we die, you go to heaven, we don't have anything, uh, it won't take anything with us when we die. So due to that case, it has made us like dogmatic. We are not. 
we have run our own religious away and they are doing those things and they're always preaching about salvation. So that's why, for instance, in Ghana, you can see a, a very poor people, but so they won't work and they won't do anything to survive, but they will always be a church praying for survival because they think that uh, when we die, the only place we have is heaven. And those who are preaching those things to us are people who are living comfortably, but are telling us not to uh, do our own traditional. And also, like uh, the politics one, what I know is whether uh, African. Uh, Rain like go on, go on. You are doing fine. Go on the, for the politics, yeah. Or for someone should bring you out. Okay, go on. It's like in Africa, we do with chieftains, kings, and those things. And it's the kings who are ruling us, giving us a lot of good uh, uh, rules and that people were participating a lot in communal work and all those things. But the British came and they brought something like democracy that we should all make our own uh, suggestion and everything. And they brought about like policy. That's where we got to uh, get the government system. But in which this uh, government thing has come and we are practicing now and we don't value our achievements. And corruption and everything have been uh, due to practicing the government system. So, like if we were to follow our traditional way, it would be anything like corruption and unemployment and all that. All right. I think that. Well done. Thank you, Adam. You see, that's when I pushed you a little Thank bit you. more. Mm, you, you were able to uh, present. And I think that you, you have given a comprehensive, you know, feedback on what the text is about. One or two emphasis here and there will make it fine. So well done. Let's take feedback from uh, Vincent. Vincent, your hand shut up. So the text is con uh, conceptual decolonization. The decolonization that Redu is advocating for. I mean, the full lecture is there, so there's no need going around about, but you have to have contact time so that you can bring out your Sense it can be just a recorded lecture, then you, you play it and you should be okay. That's why I presented myself, okay, to help you clarify any concerns you may have. But just look on the screen and you see that uh, Redu is advocating for a decolonization of our concepts. It's a conceptual decolonization. And there's a reason he advocates for that. What he means by that in the first place, which the prof took you through two ways of thinking of conceptual on my screen now please look you see by conceptual decolonization i mean two complementary things so the the author is thinking of two in one something to do and what you have, you have to do are, are two in one things one side of it is you avoid look on my screen please avoid or reverse through what a critical conceptual self-awareness the unexamined assimilation in our thoughts of the conceptual frameworks embedded in the African philosophical traditions. So when you critically, through conceptual self-awareness, you have to be aware. And then you intentionally, by effort, do what? Reverse or avoid the conceptual frameworks that are embedded in the foreign philosophical traditions that have an impact on African life and thought. You intentionally avoid it. I, I think I heard Prof give examples of terms like love, the word love, what it connotes in Western thought. Because I'm a doa. If I say me do, I love you. In the traditional African sense, so let's use that kind of conception of it. And I love you. The, the connotations in these two different frameworks are not the same. And yet you may think, oh, it's just love. It's just a sunsun. We are talking about sunsun. Or we are talking about uh, 
uh, okra. But the so and okra may not necessarily connote the same thing. Inside the language, says Jeche, uh, uh, okay, well, says Jeche and read, and now Prof is engaging on that. The language comes with a baggage. That's what Adams has, has told you. Your language, language is powerful. It comes with a whole conceptual scheme, a conceptual framework. So if we are constantly using language that is foreign to us, it is not just a different word you are using. You are carrying along the worldview, the frame, a thinking frame of whichever people's language you have adapted and you are using. And that can be problematic. So one way of decolonizing conceptually is the, the first way is what? To consciously reverse it, avoid it and reverse it. Reverse what? Those thought categories that come with the baggage. How does it come? Adams told you. Adams did a very good job, eh? Because I just picked on him like that. So I believe he's, he spoke extemporaneously. But he touched on language. He touched on politics. He touched on religion. These are the three main things Reid is talking about. He says the people that have colonized us have not just colonized us physically. We, so right now, we have a responsibility to decolonize. Not just the physical decolonization that people say they picked their bags and gone back. But it is in our language now. How? Because the language is embedded with what? Thought frame. The language has conceptual scheme. And play back Prof's examples and see them. Love. Family. When a, 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 a traditional person says family, it's it could not so much. I tell students the whole village can come and graduate one person because the, that person is their son. Your ban in your graduation, Eddie, in your first class. Our son had a first class. That includes everybody in the village, paramount chief, everyone. The, the notion of family. But think of the word family also from another context. If you go and pick wholesale, the term as used. Outside, so so Adams used the English language. So let's talk about that one. Those of you who did some linguistics, you know. Inside that frame, if I told you, if you add one to one, what will it be? The child can easily pick that and tell you the answer. But come and talk about the square root of this. As soon as the language changes, the touch frame changes. Redu says we have a responsibility to do this first part of the decolonization conceptually. Which one is that? to consciously avoid and reverse these thought frameworks that come presenting themselves in our language, in our philosophy, you know, in our politics, in our religions. And then he said, on the positive side, so the first one is what we should stop. And this second side, second one is what we should do. That one is what? Exploiting, on my screen now, don't get yourself worked up. You have done all. I'm just pointing them out to you. you sh we should exploit as much as is judicious what the resources of our own indigenous conceptual schemes, our philosophical meditations, and even the most technical problems of contemporary philosophy. So it's not enough to say we are stopping this. We are, we are what you shouldn't do, you take them out. But if you leave it vacant, you the people will go back to the foreign languages, for foreign religions foreign political systems and traditions. So what should you do after you have taken out and avoided an assimilation of thought patterns that are not indigenous to us? The second part of it is embrace as much as is judicious. It can be a wholesale embracing, but there is a lot in our indigenous traditions or conceptual scheme that is relevant for us. Now, if we don't, embrace and use and adapt and you know uh, incorporate our in indigenous conceptual schemes as much as possible they will be caught in a limbo so if it is in politics like adam said look on your screen please perhaps the wholesale adoption of foreign categories of democracy democracy just means 
the people rule. If the people choose to be ruled by a king, why do you say it is not a democracy? Why do you call it autocracy? It is not. It is the people that chose that. <laughs> Just like UK has kingdom in addition to parliament. America doesn't have a kingdom. But both are democracies, world democracies at that. So importing wholesale other people's way of doing things and getting it infiltrated into our conceptual schemes, concept ideas, how we are thinking about the matter, seeps into our language, seeps into our politics that democracy must be the ballot box, majoritarian, you know, 50 plus one kind of thought. Really says this is not how perhaps the indigenous tradition lived. So you import a democracy, for example, that is liberal in orientation, but the indigenous setting is communal. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's how we speak. We are fine. You know, I'm talking about myself. We will see to it. You know, it's only one person who do it, but we never speak me, myself, and I. Let alone going to vote, and then we say, look, if the person, if we count and it is 40 plus, uh, 50 plus one, the 50 plus one people have won. That is not in our indigenous tradition. We are always looking out for the other person. Okay, so even where we have voted, that is what he's dealing with when he says a plea for a non party democracy, the, his other paper. He's now highlighting the traditional way, if you say, I say traditional, I mean the indigenous ways of doing politics. It can be the one that we have imported wholesale. That one is antagonistic. That one doesn't think of the communality of the persons. That one is not, is alien to the people. So they are, they are adopting things that don't work. He calls for what? A conceptual decolonization, even in our religion. Because like your friend said, the religion package that you have is driving how you are living now. He, of course, doesn't believe in some external force out there, whatever the reasons are, it's up to him. But he argues in a certain way to show you that our religions are, are colonizing us, our politics colonizes us, and our language is colonizing. It is all in the conceptual framework that is ordering our life. And if you just did that, you see that we have we have captured, reduced conceptual decolonization very well. So the two complementary things, they complement each other. First, avoid and reverse how through critical conceptual self-awareness and an examined assimilation are thought. Stop it immediately. Anything that we are assimilating, bringing in without examination, we just adopt wholesale. We have to bring it to a halt immediately. And on the positive side, we should exploit as much as is judicious in the resources of our own indigenous conceptual schemes. I'm quoting him now in our philosophical meditations, blah, blah, blah. Then he says, but I cite it first because the necessity for decolonization was brought upon us in the first place by the historical superimposition of foreign categories. They brought it upon us. Those foreign categories were imposed on us of thought on African thought system through what colonialism, through the colonial process, even our educational system. Our thought patterns, Yeti calls it colonial mentality. People don't know the effect of that. It is so <laughs> damning. Unless you haven't had, uh, you know, the two worldviews at play, you are always here. So all you see is Abuchi Desla. If you travel a little, you will see it's so damning the effect of colonialism. And at this stage, Philosophers like himself would say that it is not so much what the other person should do or not do. It is what you yourself should hold yourself accountable. You, the colonized person, quote and unquote, should hold yourself up for and set yourself free from these frames that continually, you know, suppress you, make you a subordinate to the other person. The second paragraph you see that says, this has come through three principal avenues. And so that's what we touched on, the avenue of language. Your friend did that, so we are good, uh, uh, whatever. The other one is politics, and then the other one is religion. Evangelization and political tutelage on the other hand. And that's what I have tried to expand for you. He uses 
concept on, on our screen now. <laughs> I'm sorry. There are concepts on the screen that would look, you know, uh, would look innocent, so to speak. But if you were to do a direct translation into the traditional language, you see that some of them, you can't even locate it in space in, in our language. So the questions that are interesting, so to speak, for the Western philosophical frame may not be, may not even arise at all. And the, the talk about certainty and infallibility came up. That if the Akan person, for example, says, I accept it certainly that. It doesn't mean it is infallible. It's just the way we speak. So if Descartes, for instance, is looking for certainty, to mean that which cannot fail, that which is not fallible. That conceptualization doesn't exist in our traditional account of indigenous thought, for example. So you, you will be pursuing something that if you were using the actual thought framework of our indigenous tradition, it doesn't even make sense to ask those kinds of questions philosophically. Just instances to show you that the word may seem or oh, one word, I'm trying to establish what can be known for certain, certainty. That works for Western thought. Certainty thought of as what? Infallibility. It doesn't work for Akan thought, for instance, where certainty, in that sense of it, doesn't mean it's infallible. So you will be importing a, a, a thought frame that is alien to us if we don't use or we don't speak in our Specifically, I want someone to read what is on the screen for us. Let's see if we have we have something to, to clear up there. Anybody wants to read for us quickly, please? Oh dear. Where are you people? Nobody wants to read. Okay, then it's fine. Is someone reading? Right, the, then we move on. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. The paragraph. What exactly are the concepts? Okay. What exactly are the concepts I'm thinking of here? There are many of them, but let me mention only the following. Reality, being, existence, thing, object, entity, substance, property, quality, truth, fact, opinion, belief, knowledge, faith, doubt, certainty, statement, proposition, sentence, idea, mind, soul, spirit, thought, sensation, matter, ego, self, person, individuality, community, subjectivity, objectivity, cause, chance, reason, explanation, meaning, freedom, responsibility, punishment, democracy, justice, God, world, universe, nature, supernature, peace, time, nothingness, creation, life, death, afterlife, morality, and religion. Well done. This will be the next paragraph there. In regard to all these concepts, the simple recipe for decolonization for the African is Try to think them through in your own African language and on the basis of the results, review the in intelligibility of the associated problems or the plausibility of the apparent solutions that have tempted you when you have funded them in some metropolitan language. Very good. Don't go further. Thank you so much. Sir. So that is, that is the point. He's telling you that look at all these plenty words that our friend mentioned. Faith, doubt, certainty, all the, the if you were to extract them, these words, and think about them in your local language, your African language, you will see that some of them, they don't generate the supposed controversies that are generated if they are mentioned in the Western thought. So I use Descartes. I think, therefore, I am. I am. I am then, you know, I am I am in local language. There should be some predicate that I am references. Otherwise, it won't make sense. But it becomes interesting or something to pull hairs over in the Western thought because of the nature of the language. The point then is, 
language captures concepts, the conceptual scheme of people. So if you import whole say, look, if, even in Ghana, where we are all Ghanaian, if I'm speaking a certain Ghanaian language, the dialect or the local language comes with its, its baggage. You will see that some are soft spoken, it's because of their language. Some, because of the nature of the language, when you are speaking, it makes you aggressive. It's in the language. Those are just even the physique of it, not the conceptual frame about it. And really this point is, if we therefore go importing wholesale such a concept or ideas, it will lead to certain questions that should normally not arise in our everyday use of that term in our indigenous language. And so he tells you, I think Adam did a good job on that. So just to show you where it is, at the sheer fact of our institutional education, we are likely to have thought about some in English or French. The problem is that thinking about them in English almost inevitably becomes thinking in English about them. Very good. That's the point we have made. So when you think about them in English, before you know it, you are thinking the way the English person will think about it. But what do these terms mean for us as African thinkers would not necessarily be the same as how the, the uh, Western folk thinks about them and therefore the questions they generate. These are just symbolic. He's trying to use this to show the extent to which we go carrying other people's baggage. When we don't have that baggage, if you look at the top here, he said that before continuing. Look, look, he says, if you are looking on my screen, just at the end of this part, he said, but the position is graver in a situation of cultural otherness. For even ordinary common sense would deprecate needlessly carrying other people's garbage. <laughs> the garbage, we don't generate it. If it, we are talking within our frame, we won't have that challenge. But we go picking wholesale what others are forced to encounter because of how they are thinking about the matter. You won't encounter that, but you go and get busy using that. Look at how we are struggling with our democracies. Have you thought about it deeply to find out why it's not working at certain places? Perhaps we should check. Because if the frame, the conceptual framework is different, if you import wholesale some ideas that don't fit into your frame, you will struggle and struggle and struggle. And the same people will point at you and say, your, your democracy is not thriving. But if the people build their democracy on their thought frame, which is a liberal setting, liberal individualism, and you go and pick that one and you adopt it wholesale to your communal or relational frame, it might never work. Look at even the food we eat. I tell the hundred sometimes when I'm engaging them. Our food crowd tells you that we are communal. <laughs> fufu, one fufu that you eat, it has to take about three or four people to finish cooking that food. Telling you that you can't just go and adapt something wholesale without looking at yourself. We have to conceptually decolonize, decolonize. Okay, I think that the key points have been made. So on your screen now is English philosophical discourse, showing independent grounds. Prof gave you some examples there, so we should be fine. I'm done. You mentioned truth, fact, what have you. This is the certainty discussion. You'll find it here in Descartes' meditation, where he's looking for that which he can know for certain. In the tree language, you see there, please look on my screen. It says, any account will tell you, even at a pre-analytical level of discourse, that just because it is possible for me to go wrong, it does not follow that I can never go right. A popular day says, if you look carefully, you find it. If you feel a same moi, this is an, an, he's a, a, a questioning what? The notion of certainty that Descartes was looking for. It says certainty in, in tree language. Mm -hmm. Look at Kagami's own too, that I think therefore I am. Therefore I am what? In English you can end it, I think therefore I am. But if you translated it, see on my screen now, mm -hmm. I feel, I dance the other, I am. Look on it. You can't say, I think, therefore I am. It will be unintelligible. The verb to be is always followed by an attribute or an adjunct of place. I am good. 
I am big, etc. You don't say I am. It won't make sense in the natural indigenous usage, but it would in Western thought. So if you go and import it, you will be importing a supposed problem that would normally not exist if you were going by what an indigenous uh, language, still a language that was okay. Any questions? Okay, so you see the possibility of error. I think the point is made. These are examples just to buttress it. Meaning, papa, papa. I know very clearly. Meaning, pepe or meaning, kronje. I very much know. If you spoke the same thing in English and you said, I am setting, the setting here is, is suggesting what? Infallibility. We don't have that conception, says Redu, in African account thought for that matter. We just say, I know it. I surely know. That allows for the possibility of error. So we are not looking, we don't say that when I say I made a hope pefe say, then it means that it is certain to the point of infallibility. No, that is not in our conceptual scheme. But we'll have that with Descartes. And he says that is the only thing he can be setting of such that that certainty cannot be doubted. Woho, existence, look on your screen. So on the language, he spent a lot of time on the language. Woho, to, to exist, so woho. It doesn't make sense to talk exists without a reference, Whoa. standing alone, <laughs> as this, you know. So, what, so what's the point? This is an example, I could ask you, I could ask you to pick out some instances in reduced text on conceptual decolonization, which shows that our conceptual schemes presented in language may be different, and therefore we would have to conceptually decolonize our language to be able to reflect philosophically without any you know, false categories. We can be asked to do that. You should be able to pick out some of the words that he himself used. He used existence. We, we looked at certainty. We looked at to be and all that. that those concepts, those terms don't make meaning. You know, they are, unintel they are what, not intelligible if you translated them in our indigenous language. That's the whole point. It carries, so it says something else beyond what is said in the Western. And that's why you want to be careful not to go around saying, I love you. The way we say, I love you. You, you talk about sex, you see, the word sex and what it connotes, what it stands for in a conceptual scheme, like our indigenous one compared to the non-indigenous non one, the Western one. And you will see the baggage one, 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 one of them will carry compared to the other. Finally, we see the supreme being, Akwadayanyame, who one teaches the child who God is. So the supreme being talk, showing you the same discussion. All right. Any questions? I think we are done with this thing. So the religion, the language, the politics. The politics, if you read his belief for non-party democracy, it will put flesh to what he means when he says that you can't do a wholesale adoption of the, forgive me, let me say that with the white man's, hey, look at it, that is it here. It is then from a cons consensus oriented standpoint. Mm, I'm here, a system that is frequently deleterious of genuine representation. That is representation beyond parliamentary window dressing. This is point, no window dressing ballot box oriented voting. That is non-African. You don't do it that way, majoritarian, no. So you'll find that on the page nine, the one is his dissection of uh, the politics that he calls colonized, colonized conceptual frame for politics. You see there, mm. all these are his affecting their interests. You know, we don't do that. It's, we are consensus oriented, we seek consensual, it is a non-party, look on my screen, the necessity of a non-party character. If you are doing typical indigenous politicking, it is non-party, we don't want this versus that, no. It is in Penifo the, the elderly meet to, to deliberate and discuss. The posturing is not we versus them, no. But what we have imported wholesale is that way, because of its individualistic tone. It's not communal, it's not yadi, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not us. 
the frame talks me versus you. That's what we have imported. So look at our parliament. It is non ghanaian It is non-indigenous African. It is someone's extra large dress that we have collected to wear. We do won't tweak it to suit us. We won't do the tailoring bit so that it, it will fit our body very well. We just pick it wholesale and we are wearing it. And really says we, we have an obligation to decolonize. Someone read the last paragraph on the screen for me. Anyone? That's the end of his paper. And I'll take your feedback on the others. Uh, anybody? Ankuma Philip, are you there? This hand read the other one. I want to see if someone else is here. Harrison, read for me eh, if you are there. Yeah. Harrison, read most of the considerations. Hey. All right, dog. Right. Go Most of the considerations relating to the need for decolonization urged in this discussion was derived from facts about language. I was accordingly constrained to focus on the only African language about which I am. I am somewhat confident. Africans from other linguistic areas are invited to compare and if appropriate contrast using their own languages. The principle of decolonization will, however, remain the same. My own hope is that if this program is well enough and soon enough implemented, it will no longer be necessary to talk in terms of the philosophical conceptions of the Yoruba or the Leos or the Akans. Instead, we will feel we would feel able to advance our philosophical views on independent grounds. No, no, it's the process of decolonization without interest to non-African thinkers. For any engagement of conceptual options is an instrumentality for the enlargement of the human mind everywhere. Very good. For any enlargement, when we enlarge our conceptual options, when we don't become overly myopic and all we see is through the lens of the Western. But if we give options of conceptual schemes, how they can see it, how the Leo see it, how the Yoruba see it, because how they see is not the same. The term might be the same, but the frame, the conceptual idea, background to it are varied and many. If we allowed that, it will be instrumental for the enlargement of the human mind everywhere. This is what Ray is advocating for. So his conceptual decolonization is twofold. Pia asked the class, what do you think, Ray Duis, now it's just more up. What do you think his conceptual decolonization will be saying in simple terms if you were to engage some students later as a TA and they say, ah, they said we should read, TA, please, they said we should read the conceptual decolonization. Please, can you give us a gist of what the paper is about? What will you say? <laughs> we are done. What will you say? Anybody? Uh, let me see who is there. Uh, President C. Edua, what will you say to your, your student if you were a TA, like TA Mauli? And then they ask you, TA, please, they, uh, where is conceptual decolonization? What is it about? Presla, what will you say? Oh, Priscilla. Priscilla can't wait. Eh? What will you say, anybody? I just want to, you to, to sum the whole thing up in some few lines. That's what I'm trying to do. Emmanuel, do you have to? Priscilla, are you there? Priscilla, I see you, Dua. Are you there? Shall I mark you absent? Priscilla? Hey. Priscilla, I see you, Dua. Doctor. My lady, what will you say? Yes, I can hear you now. What will you say to your student? Just in case you got students who want to say, okay, give us the summary of the paper on conceptual decolonization. What will you tell them, please? Emmanuel, do you have a 
Networking, yes, I can hear you clearly. Emmanuel, go ahead. Doc, please, um, I'll tell them that um, according to Ibedu, um, he's telling us that we Africans must avoid or, I mean, um, re reverse the uncritical incorporation of foreign conceptual schemes um, in our philosophical works. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and also, we should also harness the richness of our indigenous conceptual schemes. Well well, especially in our language, politics, and religion. That's all. That's what the whole paper is about. Well done. I think I like that one. Please, that is all. That's the whole thing in the conceptual decolonization paper. So it was a good follow up to our discussions on development. We looked at what development was, and then we we took it to the African context, and we looked at how you know the categories have been that. Africa is not developed or underdeveloped or developing and what have you. And we felt that some of the, you know, categorizations are colonial in orientation. They still think of some as bosses and others as, you know, subordinates. And it is showing in the categorizations. And so we followed up with an admonishment by a philosophical mind who tells you, you have to decolonize how you are conceptualizing. Otherwise, it, the, you are just having another version of colonialism. Just that the, the bosses haven't come there physically, but it is in there. The way they have presented language to you, the way they presented politics to you, the way they presented religion to you. And they are not here physically, but the effect and the impact is still on you. So you have to feel a responsibility, says Emmanuel Udia for now, to Wean yourself of those, you know, uh, uh, frames, those conceptual thought patterns. You you might not know the effect of conceptual patterns, framework, background. I tell you, it can impact how you are even thinking. How the frame. The, the frame within which we conceptualize, it can affect you. The nation will continually, or nations in Africa, so we do that stop or reverse. Reverse means bring it back, not just stop and stand there, but quickly bring it back to the original. Not just that, but also do what? Pick the indigenous ones, especially in politics, language, religion yeah done it's read any questions please how about the recent one the, the other paper oh how about the other paper okay, why is my why all my phones ringing like this the other paper please anybody wants to talk about uh, the second paper the second uh, paper Kwame Professor AJ engaged you on. Or you want to play? Okay, thank you, Harrison. Thank you very much. Go ahead. All right, Doc. I, I didn't really finish with the audio, but the little I got from it was he was talking about uh, metaphors in our philosophical works. And then he tried highlighting some literary works that um, poses out some of a metaphor. And an example was um, Aido, who's um, sunk off a bed. And then he was trying to say that all these literary works portray some essence of our, um, our, of our African philosophies, which enables us to understand, understand ourselves better. So he told us he, during the lecture, he said we should read on um, the beautiful ones are not yet born, which, and then um, Chinua Achibis. Um, saints fall apart, which highlights some um, concepts of our African philosophies for us to understand our development much more better. Very good. Very good. I'm trying to pull that. Uh, and then with that, that of yeah, the um, coffee yeah, bed, yeah. he was yeah. trying to explain it that um, we see, um, although we have left some of our uh, practices and our values behind. 
I know who was trying to use that stamp of passing mode, tell us that it is not too late for us to get back to some values that we've left behind. That was what I understood. Well done, well done. I think that prof, the prof wanted to extend the argument from just metaphor seven as a object of national identity to even include it as a, a metaphors as objects that help with our philosophizing. The, 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 I mean, metaphorical language carries so much in terms of uh, conceptual scheme. So he, he doesn't want us to even think of it only as helping us identify, helping us uh, distinguish us from other, you know, thought patterns. So it's not just, don't think of it just as that which distinguishes you, gives you an identity sort of, but go beyond that. Maybe it's, it encompasses our philosophical frames and what have you. The whole point is, Think of it like the second half of reduce admonishment, going back to the indigenous, what we can, we can bring out of ourselves so that we will be worthwhile. When we did the development discussion, we told you that if you are going to the world market and you have nothing that the other nations should look for, then they will think of you always as what? Underdeveloped, undeveloped, uh, or developing. And they, they, they have developed or they have finished. You have to project what you have that the other person doesn't have. Nobody goes looking for what they already have. So your identity, the richness of your culture, the richness of your values are all captured in, you think that the, the non ghanaian or the non-African uh, wouldn't want to pick some good valuable things from our politics? from our cultural values, maybe the communality that we have would be something that ah, others will look out for. If we were projecting it the way we should, we have an identity. This is the point of the Anidoho paper. We have an identity that shows in our language, the richness of our language, the richness of our metaphorical claim. Yesterday, I went for a, a, a meeting somewhere and before I made my point, I said, because I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to, and I, you know, correct some impression that was created by the, the people there. So I said, if you've not gone to someone's farm, you think it is only your farm that there are plantains or something, you know, that traditional proverbial statement. Just trying to tell the people that don't, don't have that posture of, you know it all, and we are the people, we are the big people here, what have you, relax. People also come to join with something that we don't have here. So don't have a sense of finality. We have arrived and, and, and be all bossy on people. But I said all that in just one expression. When we finish, <laughs> some, some few bosses there, I don't want to be too explicit. Otherwise, I'll give lots of the things. And they say, you, this lady, you, you, you really put the people on their toes. There. Because as for us, we are this and this. And you people have come. So they, so they kept talking, talking. When I was reacting, I said, you have to chill. You have not gone into other people's farms. So you may think that it's only your farm that has planting. Others have planting plus other things. So relax. As you embrace others, you can improve on your own. It's a figurative expression. That's all I'm trying to point out. Metaphoric is rich. That one expression you made is very rich. And it, it identifies us as Africans, yes. But more importantly, it's a uh, of once has to ex extend it, not only for identity, but also what shows our philosophical frame. It's an object of philosophized reflection. And so if we do uh, defining metaphors of the cultural landscape, look at that. He, he asked you to read that the other author, the beautiful ones are not yet born. That's, that's figurative, eh? It's figurative use of language, showing that, look, this noise we are making about freedom and all that, Chill, there's more to look at the Sankofa principle. This versus the other one, the Sankofa hedge. I'll leave a, a minute or two for Mauli to read out the question that he, he says, Prof, I seem to put down for you. Sankofa, the one with O, and then I think Sankofa, the one with the O. He will explain that shortly for you when we are done. Read that the text. Anansi has a critical self portrait. Read them. It's a literary work that is, according to Anido, being used to help us carve a national identity. 
but Prof wants us to take it even beyond the national identity bit to show what the richness of our what our language and therefore our philosophy, the slave thought and the spirit of Pan Africanism. You should read that one. Okay, these ones are just to augment the earlier one. Now I would I want us to do the the group work, a quick discussion on that, and then we are done. I'll share the next set of topics and the slides on that. It will be on the God factor, religion, and what have you. I'll share that shortly. Okay. Let's look at your group work, unless there's a question on this one. So I've sent a recording to Harrison to share to your city campus course site, okay? Whilst you engage that second one, let's go to your group work. Which group wants to do a quick summation of what they wrote? I've given Max, but I want to be sure that you did the work yourself. How is your hand is up? Go ahead. Um, Doc, please, I'm asking a question, not about the group. Go ahead. No problem. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, Doc, working on Prof's work um, with um, politics, I understood um, that Swedu was trying to tell us that we should go back to our old African political system whereby chief used to sit under trees with their elders and discuss bills and then rules and regulations with their people. In a form, it's also promoted democracy. Yeah. My, my problem or my question about that, that is, you see in our contemporary times, I still see prints of it in our, um, although we borrowed the Western part of um, governance and then their political systems, in a sense that what they do at the parliament house, passing bills and then granting bills, is let's say an extension of what we used to do or what we still do in our rural areas. Yeah. The so, so you think that it hasn't changed there? Eh? Okay, so let me show you something uh, like Yes, I think that it has. Yeah. Redu's point is this, Harrison. Redu says, if you are approaching or you are, you are adopting democracy, the current one that we have is not a democracy that em embraces concept cons consensus. The kind of democracy we do is liberal, majoritarian, ballot box oriented. You see, ballot box. So it is antagonistic. You may want to read his uh, 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 plea for a non party democracy. I've, I've said that three times already. We have taken wholesale something that doesn't work for us. I mean, in the traditional sense, when he uses the account contests, always issuing a disclaimer that we might have other contests that are not like this one, but typically African orientation. What is that one? There's nothing like we want to do the bridge. Then the other people say, oh, no, no, we want the market. No, OK, let's vote. When we vote, we are 100 people making the decision. 50 plus one says bridge, or uh, then bridge, that's all. We are going home. No, that is not African. We don't do 50 plus one. We will be interested, or oh, even if 49 people say no, then how can we look out for the other? Because of the sense of we, you see, we, we don't, we are not in a hurry to end it and say we have voted, we have done one, two, three. It's not nominal counting. It is not our orientation. We are always concerned. I'm talking about the general norm, reduce argumentation. It's communal. So communal means relational. We look out for each other. It is not me, myself, and I, my, my money. I bought my I bought it myself. So I'm doing what I like with it. No. That is in our sociopolitical thought. So if you do a wholesale adoption of parliament, like what you see currently going on, someone says, IMF haircut. How do we do it? We are going to count. One, two, three, people say yes. One, two, three, people say no. Finish. The, the, no, no, the word? nominal count, we are finished. So now these people have won. You won't get the support of the other half or the other halves. But if we, we have the orientation 
like what we had in the traditional setting, says rape, of course, it will come with its own challenges now because whose chief is going to be the chief of Ghana? How long is it going to take us to set and deliberate? So those are there, but he advocates for what? A consensual approach, consensus. Consensus doesn't look for who, who majority, you know. It tries to bridge the gap. We agree to disagree and go and reflect and, and try to come halfway so that everyone will feel a part of it because of our orientation. It is our turn. So even if the others don't support it initially, we have to see how we can bring them on board. That is not what we do in parliament currently. That's not what we do with our elections. Look at the, the bloodshed that comes with just voting. Because of the what it connotes, the, the, what we have adopted is a wholesale, you know, uh, system that we, we pick like this and come and put on our own neck and swallow. So you can look at a real newspaper and see the point he's making about what the politics. We have to decolonize the political system we are running. Use what you and your people like. We don't party. We don't do this party versus that party. We make decisions, yes. And at that time, we will have to agree on something when we have it to make a decision. We will vote. But that voting is not like an entrenched, uh, you know, NDC versus an entrenched MPP, where even if that decision like haircut that is going on can be detrimental, I say I'm MPP, so I support. No, that is not African, says we do. So those are the examples, but not they are not the same. The, what we are important and what is happening. I keep telling students that look at America, how they run their democracy. Look at UK, how they run their democracy. It should tell you that everybody looks at what works for their system and they choose it. So if they chose it, it is a democracy. Hello. Uh, I think I think Doc has, has been disconnected. I think she will join.
square. Listen, can you hear me, please? Emmanuel, please, can you hear me? I hear you. All right, thank you. No, I please, you can hear you. I'm back in. Thank you for your question. All right, excellent. So I was just summing up with your thing before the, I think it's a reception issue, whatever, went up. I was just summing up to say that what we see currently in the way we are doing governance comes with antagonism, comes with you versus us, there is no sense of us, we, in the, the things we are doing. It is one group and the other. It's a partistic system. And that one doesn't work for development, especially for a, a, a frame that is communal in orientation, where we look out for each other like that. We have to have a consensual approach, which worked better for all of us then, according to Reid. And I guess, so that is the difference he would see in the current system where, you know, the ballot box oriented, where you choose and even one person has an extra mark over the other, one mark of, a, you know, the vote count is one additional person more than the other group, 50 plus one people. That, that means the decision is in their favor. How would you get other people along? I mean, how would... JDM and his folks feel that they should help to, to clear up whichever problem that the nation is having. He's waiting for you to get off so that he will come. As a posture. So if he goes back, right, it's to his advantage. It's like a market. You know, this, this is what really thinks wasn't the case in the traditional setting because the decisions were made with a consensual approach. So everybody felt a part of it. They may not have agreed on the values or what have you necessarily uh, agreed. Uh, and, he, and he discusses that agreed whatever actions without necessarily agreeing on notions. We may have differing views on what we think should be done, but we, we are able to go beyond that and agree to act together as a collective. That way we will, we will develop. But here, it is more contentious. I want you to even fail so that I can have my part because it is your thing, not our thing. But if it is our thing, then even though I'm not in government, it, I'll find it as part of my responsibility to make it work because it's for us. That's what the consensual argument is, is about. Anyway, so that would be my reaction to that. They are not the same. We are, we are doing wholesale adoption of the foreign, which may work for the foreign person because that is how their system is set up. You can look at Reduce's uh, tradition and modernity and his advocacy for and a multinational. The, the other thing is look at the African setting is multilingual, multi-ethnic, multi-everything. So there are certain setups where you import them wholesale like that. It will be chaotic for you as a, an African nation than it will be for the, the Western one where they don't have too many multiplicity of ethnic groups, multiplicity of language, multiplicity of belief systems, religion. You know. So if you bring, it, bring things like that, that are contentious, this, the recipe for chaos is higher here. You have ethnic ones, you have religious ones, you have uh, whatever, uh, linguistic ones. So the confusion can be about two tribes. Maybe Ashanti ever friction. It, it can have a, a Budu and Dani. You can have different linguistic, you know, groupings fighting over something, which may not be the case in a, a largely homogeneous setting. So the point is, it might work for another group for another setting. It might not work because of their composition and their constitution or what have you, how they are constituted. That is why you have to look at what fits your home and do it. Consensus search will be heavily needed in a setting that is multilingual, multi-ethnic, multinational, different chiefs, different kings, people who hold allegiances to their group, different languages. 
then you come and say zero plus one is how you are voting. Look at the confusion it will create. Look at Africa very well. Even as at 2023, 2022, 2020, people are still doing coup, coup. He should tell you, as if we are living in 1980, uh, can I say, 1870 something. Today's world, there's still coup d'etat in African nation. I, I'm imagining coup in America, or, but it's funny. But that should tell you, that should tell you that we are not doing something right. And it is not enough to keep passing on that, you know, complaint to the colonizer. It is a responsibility, like what you says, on us to decolonize conceptually. You do the decolonization yourself. Reverse things that you have imported that are not working for your household. Reverse it. And then after you reverse, pick up what works for you and entrench it. Let it stand. And it will not be news after all, because Western thoughts vary even in their orientation. America in the past wouldn't let women vote at the time. They are, they are, they are voting now. Blacks were distinguished. They are, they are improving. You, the thing that they have thrown away that they don't like, again, you have gone for it and you are adopting it closely. Anyway, I don't know if uh, my, my further elaboration helps Harrison. Her yes, Harrison, Doc, it I helps. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. Let's take yes, another comment if there is you. If there is, if not, then we, we quickly touch on our, our uh, group work, which I have graded. I graded for City Campus. I'll do Main Campus right after the session. Let me let me hear from you. I want to know if you did it. So the group leaders, I'm going to your course site quickly and look at the group leaders there. Then we speak to it. Group one. What do you want to tell us about the question? What did you write? You have given my mark. Now you are going to defend it. If you don't defend it, well, I'll take it out. So let's hear from everyone. Group one first. Group one members, I'm waiting. Oh, you have forgotten that you are in group one. <laughs> Good luck. Yes, sir. Build confidence. Okay, you wrote the thing, so just speak to it. That's all. Where is my? Go ahead, sir. I'm just sharing my screen for you to see. You're all good. Yeah. Okay. Look. No. So yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so, so the question was, uh -huh. question was how to um, um, elaborate on if Africa should be blamed for her trailing development. Hmm. Hello. I can hear you clearly. Go ahead, sir. I can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Listen. Okay, so, so we, started with, we started with what development means according to uh, certain philosophers like Amati Asin and Utavan. And we, 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 we look out for some factors that that causes Africa to trail in its development. Uh -huh. Very good. So I see development as you, you talk about development being a matter of stages or a process. Your next paragraph talks about poor leadership and corruption in Africa. Yes, please. Africa, point were you making with that, that of poor leadership? What did you seek to say there? Your team. It's the whole team, the not the Jamaica alone. Eh? <laughs> just since most African countries uh, attain political liberations, they have managed their own affairs and choosing leaders to the highest seat of the land and giving power to a specific government. It's like uh, there are some of the there are some of the decisions African made that have caused the trailing nature of our development. Most leaders 
that have governed most of the African countries are greedy and selfish. Chip. Uh-huh. So, so they are greedy and selfish. Like when power is being given to them, they just um they are self uh, uh, self perpetuating in power. So like inside, they want the benefit for themselves only, not caring about the citizens. Okay, so you think it is more a problem of the uh, attitude, uh, character yes, of the leadership yes, in yes, Africa. Okay, yes, that's please. your diagnosis. You. Okay. Uh, then I also see failure to Colonial utilize people. resources. Yeah, I see failure to utilize resources to stimulate economic growth. We have resources, but we are not using it. That looks yes, like please. we adapt, sort of. Mm, because as for gold and diamond and this, we have the girl. I'm saying we, we keep extracting the gold, uh, but well, that's your friend's comment too. I'm, I'm, you see, I'm discussing it with the group so that you can see, add it to the ideas that you may have had for your, your discussion, your group work. So uh, your friends, these are the argument they make. Human ca- capacity in the form of radio, we don't have an issue with it, but it looks like our character, the leadership then, and our inability to make the best of our resources could account for the supposed trail in our development. On your screen is weak communality. What what point were you was your team making with that? Uh, you have spoken enough. Let let someone else in your group talk. Otherwise, they don't end the mark. <laughs> someone else. Yes, yes, yes. Someone else tell us the point you were making about a uh, uh, weak communality. Let me see who and who are in the group. Priscilla and George Duche. Either Priscilla or George Duche. You were making a point about we communality. George, George is not feeling well, so he couldn't join. Oh, but he didn't tell me. What, what about Priscilla? Priscilla too is not feeling well, right? Yeah, hey. yes. The network is also at home. I don't know hey. where the network is. Uh, which network? Yes. If we're going yes. to do international yes. conference, for, for cash, you will not find a good network. Go on, go on, there, Vincent. Go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so I've like, been a student before. So I know students. What about yeah. our, our, our mindset? Mm-hmm. The mindset of African is, is like, we don't support our own. We, we believe the Western culture or something is superior than ours because of, mm-hmm. let's say, um, colonial, something, something like Who we been by maybe we Ghana don't people? Is that? <laughs> it's true. Yes, please. Who made in Ghana clothing? I said, who even buy made in Ghana clothing? Yeah. Hello, Doc. Hello. Doc, I do. Yeah. Okay. Also, uh, so the conception of what development has been misunderstood. Yo. A misunderstanding of yes. what development means. You development is all right. Thank you very much. Listen, I want no. you to take the next group. So you have earned yourself your nine. Group two, defend your thing. Group two is Ankuma Flora. Eh, Ankuma Flora, you did the paper alone. Yes. Yeah. Sophia, Sophia was not there. Sajofia, are you there? Yay! <laughs> Sajofia, you didn't do some of the work. It's only Flora that did it too. So you can get a mark. Flora, tell me what you have, you have put down. You have one, so. And madam, so um, with my work, I said yes. um, the way the previous African is training behind and I spoke on education and economic development outdated um, government policies and, yeah. and poor infrastructure. And with the education, I spoke on how most of the African children are uneducated, most of them being females. And also, um, the government should concentrate more on in putting the children to school because most of these high uh, most of these uh, politicians, for instance, they send their kids outside to study, um, outside of the country to study, and they come back 
into their country. They already they've already secured their jobs and everything. Mm. But we in this country and we um we we that we are not able to get to stay outside the country are very fortunate when we even land um a job um yeah a job in a country okay so what what so, so, sorry to cut you but one key thing then that others can add to their point from flora is that education is key africa's development can trail if education is not given attention and education apart from the former one you know we, we need to be educated to be able to impact our, our societies if you didn't have that emphasis you may want to think about that also as an additional point to make if people are not educated they don't know anything development will stagnate key so you see i've highlighted that i've left that on the screen for you to add to the point we should change character your friend said in the previous group we should love our own you know and grow ghana is ghana where ghana we are speaking ghana now okay don't be overly colon colonized even your mentality such that anything Ghanaian you consider not worthwhile without any critical examination don't so we we saw those ones from the previous group's presentation but then says educate the people i see women there see yeah majority of women still remain uneducated you have to have a balanced yes, uh -huh, education if you if you don't do that only the men are studying and the women are grooming the children at home and if they don't have the the, the education that leads to a transformation then we will stagnate you know we are not, we won't progress we want to make advancement in terms of development and that is important rich african leaders send their children to harvard <laughs> <laughs> what should I take this? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've not laughed like this uh, the whole of this week. Oh. Hey, sister, I'm a master. They take them to have a nice home. You come to live on. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they take them to have and leave us here. We struggle out with it. Yes. Yeah. So, so please add those very important points to your own child education women education you know holistic education so the key thing is education will help us advance all right training programs and i see at at modern government policies very important yes. policies that don't work policies are not working they are there but they don't work if we don't <laughs> revise them we will be marking times out factors that and I, I'm I'm a bit impressed about those because it's more on what we have to do and not what someone must do for us. That pushed the, the earlier we left the better because that other person won't do it for you. He wants you to remain a slave forever. So the, the, the things that the African must do to advance democracy is what excuse me to advance uh, development is what I see you all mentioned. Very good. Another Afri another reason why Africans are failing there is due to their weak infrastructure. Okay, Mate. When we are educated, all around education, we have people who build, we see a dying companies, you know, people who go to space, people who okay, corrupt corrupt administration. That's it over there. I don't know if you can see it. It's a bit scattered. Your ideas are a bit scattered, but it's fine. You work alone. Okay. Then the the last African leaders should invest in child education. Very good. Mate, thank you very much. So we now go to the third group. Unless there's a question. Alimi, where are you? You left the sister alone to do the work. She was so frustrated. Such of here. Are you here? Oh, he's no longer with us. Okay, group three. Let's take you presented, you, you submitted for the group. Lindsay asked for permission to be away. 
bear her up in prayer. He's going to see to the burial of the daddy. I mean, I will Esther. So the three of you, since there are two of you left, someone comment. What did you write in your paper? Mm -hmm. oh. So if you don't talk well, oh, no. I'll take my mark. Yes, Auntie. Go ahead. Okay, so we spoke about the fact that Africans usually copy from the Western world without reflecting on it. Like we usually, when we see people doing things, then we just do it instead of asking ourselves the benefits yeah. of it. Like how is it? My sister, that thing there's no good about us, crowd. Wholesale copy. People take note of that. Group one gave us some very good points. We got some few additions from group two. This is the third one on critical adaptation. You just adopt. You see someone wearing clothes now, you are also wearing some. Look at your weather. Hmm? So hot. Wholesale copying. You see people doing ballot box, you also go and carry some. Meanwhile, your setup doesn't embrace that. It creates friction. So madam says, I want to open it all. You people, you don't want your own to show her. <laughs> your own is not coming, it will come. Madam, go ahead and he said, uh, uh, wholesale okay. copying. copying. So yeah. I give an example with smoking, like the fact that Africans also smoke, but um, the reason that why the Western smoke is because of their weather. It's believed that their weather is the reason why they smoke, but for Africa to be also smoke, people also smoke, given the, the bad weather conditions, like the heat and all. That's take note, but they, please everyone take yeah. note. This is how they put it, Western culture, wholesale. The, fee, the thing is the wholesale adaptation. You see, I, I have not even seen it there. Very important. Something that leads to a trailing development is when you are always copying the other person. It means the person hasn't moved. You can't move. You're a photocopy. So there has to be original before you can be a copy. It will always keep you lagging behind because someone has to do it before you will see it and do it. You do your own is worse off. You are not just only copying the person. You copy wholesale, including the errors in the exam. Very, very bad to make you stagnate because maybe when the one you are copying, he has used the razor to clean it already and has improved it. You are now busily copying the rubbish to bring, to come and present. That's the, the, what uh, Esther and her folks are talking about. It. Okay, let me see. There is a please keep going, my lady. Okay, another point is that the system of government, uh, uh, the government policies are updated. The system doesn't allow for innovations to be made like so it it, it also draws the economy backward. Mm, because when such policies are made, it raises the price, sorry, the standard of living of people. But because policies are not outdated, it, it is not that so a lot of people are can you give us an example of such? I think that the previous uh, group also touched on that outdated or outworn government policies. Like which one? Can you give us one? Um, we'll keep it in mind immediately. But we, it it helps us to see like a policy that is not 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 helpful. It's out. It, it has outlived its relevance. We have to stop use you know using it or working with it, but people we don't have, we are not creative enough, we still have it and it is drawing us back. You know, in the past, the bureaucracies surrounding uh, government work, before you do this one has to sign it, they to move from there to so and so, I mean, some long protocols. It doesn't help for investment. Investors won't come because just one, you know, license they need to operate here, it takes three years moves from one office to the other four years later they will look at it a little come change the dot on the thing you know bureaucratic systems can stagnate development because the the, the things are not facilitated it doesn't go fast address system uh, and stuff like that i think that when you say government policies or maybe uh, outdated ways of doing things you want to put some flesh to it to show how that leads to uh, 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 lagging development. Okay, go on. I see corrupt there again. I see that. Yeah, there. hello, Doc. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes.
Hello, Doc. Yes, Manche. Auntie, I can hear you. See this one. Yeah, we spoke about how the the office of the um the government is usually full of corrupt corrupt it's sorry. Doc, please don't come. Yo, take your time. Don't worry. But you didn't know I'll do that. I intentionally did that so that I can get people who didn't work. But so far you have you have shown that you, you at least contributed to the content. We have disregarded certain vital cultural values. Very important. Vital. They are vital. They are values. We value communality. I'm telling you, we, we are concerned about other people. It's not like everybody should do their own thing. No. We are concerned. It's a value we hold on to. Ah, now we are throwing them away. We respect authority. Okay. I see children and I see children and women were hardly given a say in making decisions. The value of communalism. I see it here. Maybe it gives mm -hmm. others some ideas. I'm taking you through them so that I get some ideas that I can enrich your essays with it. All right. Talk about how Hello. I'm listening, Pa. Uh, okay. We spoke about how corruption too is affecting our development. Corruption is in the public sector, private sector, judiciary sector too as well. So all that also um is what is corruption in these institutions lead to below standard education, um, low grade health care. So all this usually leads to poverty. That's why a lot of uh, the current countries are like lagging, lingering in poverty. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, Lisa, look at what I've highlighted on the screen. Our attitude towards work. You see, very important. Attitude towards work. We have to. The only ways for this to change are for the conception and attitude towards work to change. Very important. So those who are you are, you are listening to other people's own added to your points. At development may be lagging because people's attitude. You say they should come to work at eight. You can't eight, eight, thirty, nine, nine, thirty, ten. Now <laughs> somebody's company is at eight, eight, thirty, nine, nine, thirty, ten. Look at attitude to time. It can stagnate our development. So whilst we are busily blaming someone for some things, which, which to a large extent is the case, there are other things that we have to we have to stop the corruption. We have to have a positive attitude to time. We should respect our cultural values. We should educate holistically. We should have good infrastructure, you know, uh, the earlier ones. So, so but thank you very much, madam. I want to go to the next group. Okay. Well done. End your mark. So it means that as for the, the fact that our development has trailed. It, we, we haven't contested it. It hasn't been argued about Kraha. But it didn't do the work. It was Ankuma Philip and Kwashi Kaleb that did it. Let's hear them. Who is speaking? Kaleb or Ankuma? Look at how they did their work. Very nicely done. At the beginning, Africa has endured a variety of social, political, and economic hardships over the years. Due to these, Africans are unable to support the recovery and long-term development of the continent. We admit that though there have been global influences that have affected the development of Africa, it has not been the, eh, been the affected continent. So there is no argument to blame the foreign invasion, but we need to blame ourselves for not developing because of the points that we will engage in this paper. Beautifully done. Even if you disagree with that, they say, well, we can't keep going back to the colonialist. He has finished what he wants to do and exploited you as much as they can. Going forward, EDA, <laughs> we have a role to play to, to, to help make our, our continent better. That, that is the point. And he says, we will do that with the points that will engage in this paper. Straight to the, but this is philosophical, the posturing, you see. So one, the politicization of economic interest. Please explain that to us, friends. You've got 10 over 10. 
Philip and and Co. There were two of you. If you did it yourself, then start talking. Caleb, Philip, who is talking? Hey. Philip and Goma. <laughs> I'll subtract Max. Where is Caleb and Philip? Are they there? No, please. Hey. Where are they? They don't get a full mark. I don't have any permission from them to be absent. No, no, no. Tell Philip that then he gets his, uh, uh, I subtract Max. Because I can't, I can't tell if you did the work yourself. He will come and defend it. I've changed the mark. He's not there and Caleb is not there. Eight for now until they defend it. And for absenteeism, no. But they've made their point nicely, inadequate research for indigenous technological development. Mm, corruption comes up here too. I see idiosyncratic pursuit of African leaders. Character, talked about character. Cronism, nepotism, and poor leadership placement. The politicization of economic interest. Nicely written like that. Now come and defend, let us know that you did it yourself. You are, you are missing in action. Mm, Caleb and, and you didn't ask permission. That's absent. Okay, let's take group five. Group five is Ahiato Eunice, Erica, Emmanuel Idiafo, Emmanuel Idia, sorry, and then David Amwa. Who is speaking? Oh, why is it that now people are spoiling our nice show that we are having like that? Uh, Doc. Go ahead. Um, so if I, if you speak about the fact that we don't have a development plan, that even if um the parties come and they say, oh, I I'll do this, I'll do that, they a nice manifesto. As soon as they come, they they become corrupt and they don't really do anything for the country because of their selfish interests. I see. Um, Take a note. Spoke about development the, plan. Brain. Just a minute. Let me emphasize for others who missed that to hear. Your friend is therefore saying that we don't have a plan, one that can establish continuity, so that even if governments go and come. There is a main plan that is guiding our development. Before you build a house, you got to get a plan. So even if I have to change the foreman or the contractor that is doing the building, the building plan is there. So he only has to come and do it according to the plan laid down. That way we will make progress. Not that one does it, gets off the seat, another one comes breaks the whole building down and starts another foundation. Then another one will come later on and say, no, 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 this side of the building is not fine, break it down. You won't advance, you won't progress. Very important point, no development plan that has been conceptualized for all of us to follow. Yo, please continue. We also spoke about brain, brain, brain. Very good. Um, the, the events where professionals travel outside look for greener pastures and you rather work there and and help in developing the other countries rather than working in their own countries. So in every year we, we hear people travel, especially the nurses and doctors, we hear they travel a lot. I'm on my way out. <laughs> Don't tell anyone that I said that. Hey, something that you go out there and it's it is so lucrative. You earn so much. You have all the here. They want to trivialize it like that. My sister, they will drain and drain the brain. You know. So that, that's the point, Madam is making. People have been trained. They can't get employed here. They they will go. The nurses, the teachers, they will go. And they will go with the know-how. People don't know that you don't respect here. 
They will go with it too. Auntie. That's what Madame is saying. Yo, no development plan. Brain drain. Hey, I didn't see all of those in your paper. I think I have to do an upward shift for you. I'm coming. Mm, the way you are explaining it here. You go ahead. Let me let me open it. Is that all you read? So the third so the third point was the fact that we have natural resources, but then with those natural resources we have, we export them brought to the foreign countries, and they would rather actually to reach example our cocoa. They, they they do the chocolates, the cocoa products, the kind of food products we have. Then the diamonds and then the gold, so they make jewelry out of it, and we import it back to us, and we buy it at expensive price. So something that we have, we are not able to develop it as, but rather we send it to them, and they develop it, bring it back, and sell it to us and that's fine. So it's like, it is mm, not adding value. Also try. That's the point you are making, right? Adding value yeah. to that. Okay. The raw, the uh, raw materials. Instead of sending it to them, and they they adding value, and then coming to sell us, sell it to us at an expensive price. Oh, I think it was just a matter of organizing your thoughts. So the content up. there. You get a full ten. And well done, Erica. You should have. The team should just have uh, highlighted. You see how um, Philip and Comer's group did point one. Is this so that is the thesis that they develop it point to that way we are able to fix it out easily. Continue. So I've seen your brain drain, I've seen your lack of the uh, how do you put it? You, you don't process, you don't have a what is it? You don't add value. And if you don't add value, you won't develop. They will come and take your own cocoa and do chocolate for you. And you will buy the chocolate. Your resources will go. Economically, you will still be dependent on have you. So that, that was the other point. And the first one, I want to award a mark for it. So I'm trying to find it in your paper as you present. You touched, which one did you touch on earlier? Aha, uh -huh, brain drain, better opportunity. Uh, there, is it. there is it. There is it. People, people, brain drain, there it is. Oh, I didn't see this. Oh, I'm not, I'm not 10. I'm not 10. Why are they? Then the other one is development plan. Yeah, a plan that is guiding everyone. Very good. Well done. Well done, Erica and the team. So you scored a 10 now. Right. Let's go to um, those who didn't think of those ideas that can help our development. There, there it is. Eh? As you hear your colleagues, I think you can add the points to your tomorrow if you become the, the whatever for us, then you can. You can apply them and make Ghana a better place. Hey, let me do it one one eh, because it's not changing. I want to give everyone their turn. The last group, I think. You see how we grade? I'm intentionally showing you so that you see it. I want you to see it. That's how grading is done. Because this was a group work. And here I thought, yours rather is delaying you. <laughs> I nearly missed yours. Okay, so there it is. You should see it now. End yourself 10 message. Okay, then the last group, group six, and then we can end for the day. Group six. Hey, you also had 10. Ofer Harrison's group. Yes. Uh, Salah, Stephanie, and then Sabla Yunis. Who is speaking? Doc, I'm speaking. Hey, Harrison. You let them speak. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. What did you put in your paper? Okay. Okay, so in our paper, we, we talk our main focus, like the main thing, we, we thought that looking at why Africa is not really, really developed, the main contribution is corruption and poor governance. So okay. looking at our, our looking at African countries, like for instance, um, we have ineffective and, and poor and weak governance because of the level of corruption and mismanagement. Because mm. uh, most African leaders are not really concerned about the interests of the people and then the development of the nation. All they are interested in is themselves and how to make um, their own benefits from, from their own gains. It, it has left us with um, 
um, a lot of problems. We are lacking a lot of investments and um, professional infrastructure, looking at roads, hospitals, schools. And then this, with this uh, need, that will, that will help us develop more. But since we are, we are lacking in these um, sectors, it has led to um, we not getting the chance to be developed. Mm. But yeah. We also looked at, we also looked at external exploitation and neocolonialism. So the new very important. I design. hope everyone is listening. I hope you are listening. Very nice points being made there. Yes, so, so poor governance, corruption, exploitation, and neocolonialism. This is very important. External. These ones are external factors. So they are not overlooking the fact that there are external factors that are suppressing a developmental agenda, apart from the internal ones they've highlighted. Go ahead, say. All right. So with this um, exploitation and then neocolonialism, we, we try to talk about the fact that the, um, the Europeans have, since they colonized this, they found a new way after we gained in independence, thinking that we are free, but low key, we are not free. They found a nice way to trap us <laughs> to still believe in them. Forgive me. Eh? <laughs> I like the way I say they found a nice way. This one is even worse off. Says Nkuma, Kwam Nkuma. No colonialism is even more dangerous than colonialism proper. Because colonialism, the people are there. So you can tell that they are suppressing you, they are subjugating you, and all that. This one is a new form of it. It's not there. So he doesn't owe you any obligations, doesn't have to bear anything, but he's sitting on you all around. Continue, sir, before I take up your, I take it up from you. Very, very painful. Yeah. So, so um, um, doing our group work, we discussed among us so what we realized was that, you see, in mo look at most mo mining sectors in our country like this. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. even belong to the state. No. They belong to private individuals from outside, but because oh, of the wow, poor okay. governance our leaders, uh, 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 we think that they bringing all these investments into the country will help us get employed because of unemployment rate, but rather they are exploiting our resources and they are using these resources to feed their industries abroad. Course, and we are so sad and they still see us as not developed. Hmm. I know. Hmm. Very good. And then Continue. we also talked about um, Africa's underdevelopment is a legacy of colonization, which is a, a left deep and lasting wounds in our uh, African society. Yes, we, um, we um, taking that point, we looked at our uh, foreign political and economic system. So to round it, you see, we borrowed, as we, we did earlier, we borrowed their political systems in such a way that yeah. we think that it is rather helping us um, to uh, manif uh, manifest or like understand our ourselves, but rather mm -hmm. it is rather not helping us because, in as much as we think we are practicing this party system, this democracy, and everything, it is rather benefiting them in a way. And then, in yeah. the economic side, look at um, it is the World Bank that determines, and then yeah, the yeah. Um, um, market, um, world market that determines policies for us. Maybe yeah. we need it. They will tell us that these are their conditions. Although yeah. they've come to trap all these resources from us, they will still give us conditions. And then we don't have yeah. anything to do but than to abide by these conditions. And then they are still cheating us. And then when they finish, they will tell us that we are not even in the history of development at all. Mm -hmm. I so I like um, this, point. this point on your screen. You said that. We, we, the blaming of Africa for all its woes obscures, you know, the broader historical and structural factors that contribute to Africa's underdevelopment. You want to touch on that? Yes, Doc. Yeah. Um, my, my. You and your team, oh, the way the people have left you to do all the talking like that. Did you write the paper alone? Um, um, Doc, um, um, uh, Stephanie said his, her network is not really stable. Yay! And then, Network. UNESCO <laughs> is not a philosophy student, but he's reading the course as a free elective. And at this moment, yeah. he has, she has an Mate, Mate, continue. Is she a peace science student or economic student? Economic student. He's a history and geography student. But because I was explaining the course to her, she decided to join us. Mate, Mate, this is a very rich paper. Well done. 
continue. Tell me, I wanted to know, so you, I see that you want to say that it's not always good to do the blaming. You don't blame the African all the time for the underdevelopment, but there are external factors. So is there such blaming obscures the broader historical and structural factors? And I'm interested in uh, what you see, what you see there. All right, no. so, yeah. so while there are certain factors within Africa that contribute to the underdevelopment, it is important to recognize the blame that blaming Africa for its underdevelopment is misguided and counterproductive. Such blaming obscures the broader historical and structural factors that contribute to um, underdevelopment. So what we are trying to mean is that although um, when you take um, are certain factors, the factors that lead to our development is not only based on what uh, Western people have done and then what they have done. But if you look at both, both factors, both factors are contributing um, to um, like our um, underdevelopment. And then before we can, it, it is up to us to realize that Yes, indeed, there are external factors and then internal factors. But the whole development on Africa, although the economic um, economic systems and then um, other um, problems related to it, we have to reanalyze ourselves. There has to be self identification for us to understand ourselves and realize the problems going on. That will create. Um, I don't know, like th that's what helps you know, us. Right, you, know. I, you know, look at the very important points you make here. We have to seek and promote and, you know, argue for more equitable global economic systems. We have to push for that. Nanado, I think, set off with that. Ghana beyond aid. We, we have to say, look, don't, don't set up unfair systems and then come and aid us. We don't want aid. We want a system that is fair. If the system is fair and people don't have to come you know begging and you giving them you know uh, uh, tidbits from your table the systems must be fair the global one if it's in the market economy it must be fair and and that can help you know advance the development of Africa. in other words the systems that external systems must also be looked at you have to advocate for that otherwise Will struggle. See, you tell us this could involve advocating for fairer trade policies. Yes. That gives less developed nations a better chance to compete. Yes. So the market forces and the rules of engagement internationally must be fair, as well as pushing for the cancellation of debts and other forms of external exploitation that limit the ability of African nations to pursue their own development goals. Yes. We have to push. And uh, I think it was before that went for Hippie some of the debt must be cancelled. Some of them, we must push for that so that you can have a fair ground to now start. Otherwise, you'll be on probation forever. You will con constantly be paying debt, constantly be, you know, uh, uh, solving past problems. So if we were to do those, see that so far we have been looking at internal, but these ones look, look at the external as well. When I bring my, my mango or my cocoa to the market, would you be fair enough to give me a good price for it? You know, so we have to negotiate that because that way, even though I'm not processing it, I'm not changing its value like the previous group said. I think it was Hanyato's group said we should add value or it was Flores' group. Even if I don't add value, my raw material will count. I will be able to get a fair deal for that raw material to be able to develop my nation. We have to advocate for those fair trade policies, et cetera. You see, people, you see how much the people wrote, they are still going on. Another way to address Africans and their development is to support local governance structures and institutions, accountability, transparency, they are all there. Mm. Promote greater citizen participation in the political process. Hey, did you write all these things yourself or some of them were downloaded from somewhere? <laughs> eh? Doc, please, we did a research. Uh -huh. I, I, I can tell, but it's beautifully done. We are not caught plagiarizing too. So well done. It is important to work to heal the wounds of colonialism. Very important. Don't overlook it all. The impact of colonialism is vast and telling all around us. It's not a straightforward thing, sir. 
So it takes a while to do that healing and to galvanize around the key things. You have summarized. Please read your conclusion. Let's see if you can sum up our discussion for the day nicely. All right. In conclusion, blaming Africa for its underdevelopment is a misguided and counterproductive approach that obscures the broader historical and structural factors that contribute to the continent's challenges. While there are certain factors within Africa, such as corruption, the poor governance that contribute to its underdevelopment, it is important to recognize the role of external exploitation, global Good. economic system, and Good. the legacy of colonialism in shaping Africa's present situation instead of blaming Africa. It is important to work towards a solution that addresses the root causes of underdevelopment, such as promoting more equitable global economic systems, supporting local governance structures and institutions, and working to heal the wounds of colonialism. Only through such efforts can Africa realize its full potential and shape a brighter future for its people. Thank well you. done. Thank you, sir. This is a well done paper. I'll give every one of you an additional one mark. The system won't permit me to do 11. Let me see if it will save 11, 11 over 10. Because the grade, grading skill was, but I think you, you can get that extra one mark. Uh, the gradient is greater than the maximum 10%. Is that OK? OK, I know how I'll do it for you people. Well done. Any questions, everyone? Harrison's group did a very good job. Hey, ta, ta, Philip and Kumada, I've taken, <laughs> I've taken two marks from their marks. They should come and defend what they got. Otherwise, I've taken the two marks from it. I'll keep taking until they are able to con convince me that they did the job themselves. OK. Please, do you have any questions, class? Enjoy the session today. Well read. I'm going to share the next topic and its slides and its reading. I'm hoping that I'm able to give you the complete course outline now, and that Prof and I have, have come to some conclusions on how we want to engage. You would have the whole, the whole set of outlines, and then you are good to go. So I'll share that. Any questions, please? Very good. Very, very good. If you do that, yeah, every day when we come, we'll have a good time. When people come and they haven't read and they are jumping all over the place, then I'm not happy. I see a hand up. Oh, OK, no hand up. Any questions? I see Adam. Adam, is there a question? Let's take yours. Then I'll take it. Uh, please consent. Right. Consent the group work. Yes, please. Uh, be, uh, because of my register, I haven't been able to add to the car yet, so I'm working on it. And it's like, to the group work, to the group that I'm joining, I made a mistake. It was like a main campus group, so I saw a certain group, that group, mine, and I joined them for us to discuss the work, and they posted it. Oh, I, 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 I told them to add my ID number, but because I'm not on Sakai, I wanted you to be aware of it. And no, maybe the way forward. Adam, so when are you getting on to Sakai? This is your personal thing. I don't want it to be on the recording. When you get on to Sakai, yeah. uh, because if you are not on Sakai yet, this is the, the end of the fifth week. Oh, so yeah, let's stop and everything. Uh, okay. Why? Is there a technical hitch? I defend my course last year, so when it's I, okay. it's I okay. was coming, like, then, then it's fine. Then it's fine. Don't say it, it will be part of the record we can talk of of the class okay and see how to go up okay thank you emmanuel if you have but dog, Emmanuel, um, i just want to ask um add add up to um the standard factor center sorry harrison was talking about oh please do thank you please do uh madam i was like um sorry dog currently we African countries have to, I mean, exit from certain organizations that we belong to. Some, something like this IMF and World Bank, WTO, and the rest. Um, mm -hmm. This IMF and World Bank came into existence after the World War to mm -hmm. bring back or revive the economy okay, mm -hmm. and then help countries um, that are lacking behind. But you realize the case that you go to them, they give you unnecessary 
Sasa uje hapa wanza. Emmanuel, uje wanza yes. juu. Hmm. Those who don't understand the tree I'm speaking, don't worry. I'm just lamenting. So it's not useful. Don't worry. <laughs> Go ahead, Emmanuel. <laughs> Yeah, no. So, taking the WTO, that's World Trade Organization, for instance, they are to regulate these um, trade rules and, I mean, um, all other things relating to trade at the global level. It's fine. Whenever they go and sit to decide on certain matters or rules, This African countries, we have Minister of Trade, let's say um, Ghanaian Minister of Trade, Alan Chamartin, but he has resigned. And, and they put them in a room called a green room. And then these veto powers will then go and sit on the matter, decide. And then afterwards, these ministers come and then take pictures with them. Don't you, you just don't understand. So I think we are not even. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We really have to sit up and chart a path so that we can identify with uh -huh, that will work and augur for us. Of course, you cannot think of us without connect the connection with the global others. But the earlier you develop at your own pace, within your own frame, with your own conceptual scheme and you know your own conceptions of what development is. Ah, I, I studied at the Netherlands. They won't speak English, not because they can't, they can, but their website, their educational curriculum, everything is in Dutch. If you want to translate to English, you can do that on the site. Their bus terminals, what have you, are all in Dutch language. Because it's important, the language is an embodiment of the conceptions of the people. The frame, how the persons frame their thinking, is captured in language. It's very important for us to start from somewhere and own our development and pursue it our way, of course, with, with help and assistance from others. But you cannot expect that someone will develop your nation or your continent for you. The earlier we set up, the better. Thank you very much, everyone. I think that if one day, very soon, most of you will sit at high places and you'll remember the sessions that we had and you will contribute to the development of our You need your hand just shut up. Go ahead. Hey, today the people won't let us close. Wow. <laughs> Yes. Is that you see uh, that example? You see, they have like a uniform language. They all speak that. Yes. So the point will be for Ghana, Ghana, for example. Yes, for Ghana, which one will we choose? That's the that's the issue, right? Uh -huh. That is why. That is why, my dear lady. That is why we would have to concert. You see, it is a concerted effort we have to make because we will prefer to choose English, which is foreign to us. It's not even within our localization, our local frame. But we will want to choose a foreign language to them. connect to it. That one I don't like. I don't want Ghana to be a national language. I don't want Asante to be a national language, but I want English. Look at the way we are struggling. I said this learning we are learning, if we're speaking in our local, uh, you know, when I say local Ghanaian language, you will see how fast it will be. Even the conceptualization will be easy. Oh, I dear back, one back, what can I be mean? I'm teaching math. If you have one and add one, it's so easy. But you come and stand and talk square root. You talk, uh, you know, uh, long division. And the thing is so strange. So the question that Madame has just, or the very important point Madame has raised is the multilingual posture. But even in a multilingual posture, posture or a multilingual setting, we have rather adopted a foreign language as the national language. If that is possible, then wouldn't it be better if we choose something that is within our reach because of our conceptions, the way we think about the world, our frame, I will be more closer to say an Hauser or a Gan or a Fanti, even if I'm ever in our orientation, than I would be with a German or a Dutch. That's the point. So we have to judge advocates for the search for a national language, one that has already attained almost a uniformity. 
you know, in Ghana here, in any corner you go, I think it's a Santi tree or something, I can't, that is oftentimes, you know, what day, when you come to Accra, uh, 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 Uche, Uche or something like that. We can coin and accept a national language if we want to, to be the one that is good, just like we've, we've done, but this time we've used a foreign one. We have accepted a foreign language, French, then it is sitting on a nation that speaks uh, uh, Yoruba or something like that. It, it, should, it should worry us. So then even in the face of multilingual lingualism or multiplicity of languages, we can still choose one. And that will be closer home, that's the argument, than when we have to import one that has totally foreign categories and understandings and conceptions. Maybe you want to reflect around that for your future writers, okay? Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Harrison Adams, David Amwa, Vincent Jomeku, Emmanuel Idia, Esther Meya, Eunice, Erica Hiato, Laura, Matie, Mauli Pema is here, Priscilla Siedua, and Sylvia. Have a wonderful weekend. All the best and take care. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. I really enjoyed today's session.